This is the plaintiff, Letitia Howard. She says she hired the defendant to put dreadlocks in her hair, and she paid her $1,180 to do it. The defendant did a poor job. Her head and scalp became irritated, and she had to hire someone to remove them the next day. She also lost 50% of her real hair. She couldn't attend her own birthday party and is now suing this woman for $9,180 for all she's out. This is the defendant, Sabrina Reese. She says she put the dreads onto the plaintiff, and when she left after her 12-hour appointment, she was a happy camper. A few days later, she called to complain the dreadlocks were too big, but the plaintiff provided the hair, and she just installed them. Dreadlocks are permanent. If you want to take them out, you have to cut the hair, and if the plaintiff cut her hair, how can she sue her for it? She can't. That's how. She's accused of causing a bad hair day. Okay. All parties, please use your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, ma'am. All righty. So you went to the defendant in order to get dreads put in, right? Correct. Dreads. And what day is it that you go to have her do your hair? On December 5th. So what happens? I go in on December 5th to get my hair done, and she's installing the locks in my hair. And as she's installing the locks in my hair, I'm just scratching my head. So I'm asking her, are you putting something, you know, are, are you using some type of grease or something that's making my hair itch? And she says no. So fast forward till we finish my hair. I hate it. Did it's you tell uneven. her you hated it? Um, no. How much did you pay to get your hair done? I paid her $1,180. And how long were you sitting in the chair? 14 hours. 14 hours. Okay. Um, so you didn't say anything to her because it's awkward? Or? It, it, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. She doesn't have any mirrors in the, in the room where she does your hair. There's no mirrors there. So it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I was tired. I got in the car. And when I got Okay, when did you realize that you were unhappy? I mean, do, there may be no, are there no mirrors on the walls where you do there, the hair? There's a gigantic mirror to the left, a whole closet door mirror. Did you, are you telling me that you paid her without seeing it? Oh, well, she, an hour into her doing your hair, she makes you give her the money. All right, but are you suggesting that you had your hair done and at no point had a handheld or anything so you could see how you looked? No, no, she has you, she has you over in a little corner this is What's the that mirror. a picture this of? This is a picture clearly showing the gigantic mirror sitting. She's see. sitting in front of her. This is, is that her. a picture of her? This is her. How did you end started. up taking a picture? That's I take pictures of all the clients before and after to show the before and the after. Okay, and then where you see am that, I seeing you see a the gigantic mirror? mirror? See the little gold? That's where the closet starts. All across there, all across the, that, you're looking into a mirror. That's a mirror. The whole side is a mirror. Quite possibly, because I'm seeing um, yeah, the stuff from the other inverted side. Inverted convex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But in any event, let's enough with the mirror. You go home, and what happens? I, I hate it. I, I um, take a selfie. I send the picture to my brother. I'm like, I, I hate it. The parts are inconsistent in size. Some of the locks are braided in. Some of them are twisted in. Like she used several several different methods on my hair to to, and it was just it was just hideous. So I started taking it down. You took it down yourself? Yes, I started taking it down on my own. And I noticed that the hair is stuck in my head. So I call her and I ask her if she used glue in my head. And she says, yes, they're supposed to be permanent. Now, this is not any type of hair glue. This is some type of crazy glue that she's using. Okay, let me hear from you on what you're using. I do have pictures of her finished complete hair showing the consistency okay. and the parting and everything that she said is the opposite of everything that she said. The locks um, are created to be permanent. This is, initially she had an appointment for a lock that was smaller. It was for $1,880, which are considered extra small. She decided 
that she wanted the ones that were a little bit larger, which is that size. I gave her exactly what she asked for. You can see the- Here's what I don't get. Mm -hmm. When you say you gave her exactly what she asked for, how does the hair come to you? No, no, it's not pre-made. So it's you're loose. doing it. I create that. That's why it takes a while. I long. got it. So, yeah. so with that same hair, could mm -hmm. you have made it smaller? Yes. It, oh, okay. That's why there's a difference in the, a big difference in the pricing right. between the 1100 Yeah, because you're gonna be there right. even longer. Even longer. Right. Your Honor, I have a picture of what was requested and what I ended up having. Right, but you're sitting there and you see the first one done. If it's not the right, did you feel like it wasn't the right size? Well, she got bigger. As she moved, as she got tired, as the night went, uh, went along, she got bigger. Let me see a picture that would reflect I, that. I have her completed hit. Okay, let me see your picture, but let me also see a picture that you may have taken that would reflect what you're saying. Okay. One here. Okay, how does this show that she got bigger? Well, I mean, there's no consistency in the parts. If you can see, some of them are smaller, they're different sizes, they're different. They're not all the same. Show size. me, I'm going to need you to show me what you're saying. Um, I mean, you know, they're not. No one counts the number of hairs individually to make sure that, but I don't see them that different. I guess, y y are, you, are you asking me to compare these to these or what? Let's see. Here, I have more pictures. Okay. Okay, you've circled something here. What is it you're trying to get me to oh, see? Oh, that was, it was just glue. It was the okay. glue that was in my hair. What kind of, do you use glue? I only use glue when the hair is short. The pitch, The reason why I, sh I took the before picture to sh brought the before pictures to show you, because her hair was so long, there was no reason for the me to use glue. And when I use glue, it's nowhere near the scalp. When you look at the- Did you use glue on her head, yes or no? I, not on her head, no. It, Did you use, I'm sorry, did you use glue in this hairdo? Yes, I did. Okay, and where did you use glue? Down the shaft of the lock as I'm creating it. If it's loose, when I pull on it, I'll tap a little glue and wrap over it there. It's never on the scalp, never touched her scalp. If there was a client whose hair was maybe this short, I would have to put the glue a little closer to the okay. scalp. Okay, now that on the pictures that she's showing me, um, there was one picture that I know I saw that showed some redness, because you were complaining that it itched. She never complained while she was in the chair about her itching. I got Your Honor, it. I asked, I was sitting there scratching my hair the whole time she was doing my head, and I asked her specifically if she was using some type of glue because my hair just kept itching. Not true, I mean, excuse Your me, Honor. not glue, grease. Okay, but I'm, I'm seeing like redness in her, you know, I'm seeing redness. So what causes the um, irritated scalp? It doesn't happen. As you can see in the picture she just showed you, that was during the process of her, go back, see the ones that she's disconnected. That was someone trying to remove it who irritated her scalp. You see the, you see the ones that are undone and then next to the ones that are done? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not that has nothing to do with me. That's she her says trying that to she was it. telling you while you were doing that it, is that it was absolutely it. not the okay, truth. Okay, now it's not uncommon though that people will complain that their heads tight. Yeah, yeah. tight. It wasn't. Yeah. Tight. Hold so, on one second. Hold on one second. Absolutely. Sometimes people will say it's a little tight because if you see on the scalp, it, I have to lock it in. So yes, people sometimes do complain about it being too tight. But never, I don't touch the scalp with glue. Never was she sitting there scratching her head saying or ask. That's just not true. And as you, on those pictures that she's showing, that was clearly when she attempted to have it removed, that person irritated the scalp, which you can understand why it would be. Who ended up removing it? You? I started removing it. So and these then? pictures was when I started. Then I and had a professional because all of my hair was coming out because it was just glued in. Well, so yeah, that's why I probably wouldn't start taking out my own hair. I told her it could well, not, it was not supposed and, and, to and be isn't permanent. the idea, how long is this supposed to last? It's permanent. This is how they found me on my Instagram. It clearly states I create permanent lock extensions. My hair is locked. If you want to take it out, it has to be cut, which is exactly what I told her. So she went after that and tried to remove it anyway. I, Your Honor, I have a, a who's professional the with loctician. You? Who is the that, person with you? He's a loctician. So he he did he redid my hair. He's the person that redid it. Okay. Is he your friend or no? That's uh, no. I met him through a friend who referred him during this. Yes. Okay. During the Come process. on up, please. 
right. So um, there was a statement that was made that... Um, What's a loctician? So a loctician is a person that specializes in natural hair and dreadlocks. Okay. And uh, what makes one a loctician? Is there some certification? Or? Um, there are certifications for it, but actually Miss uh, Reese is one of the reasons why in the state of California, it's actually not a requirement to be per, uh, licensed. She actually challenged the Supreme Court. So she did she some did? great things. Yeah. My business, I lobbied to get the law passed so that we could operate without a cosmetology license because we do not perform cosmetology. Okay. Yes. All right. So go ahead. So great. Um, but she did mention that um, it, that dreadlocks have to be cut out. This is not true. Um, you can actually use uh, conditioners. There's, it's a very long, meticulous process. Like to you reach. shouldn't try to do it on your own. For the most part, no. Right. But um, also just the whole idea of the fact that she had to use Glue, totally unacceptable. Um, you okay. don't have to use glue. This is an example of a lock extension. Um, I just made it very long for the sake of you being able to actually see it and understand it. This is the type of hair that's purchased. And this is, um, I utilize these tools. I, uh, I lock the person's hair first, and then I attach this. No glue, Say no chemicals, nothing. You lock the person's hair. So basically what I do. you lock that lump so of hair? So their natural hair, depending on the length of their natural hair, I utilize different tools and I, I manually dreadlock their natural hair. Once their hair is locked, then I take the extension hair and then I attach the extension hair and then it becomes this. So their natural hair will then grow into the extension, no glue, no chemicals, no nothing needed whatsoever. This is the proper way to do it. Okay. Um, what say you to all that? With all due respect to him, um, there is no- Do you two know each other? Or no, no, not at all. Do we, all locticians in no, but that's Los the, Angeles that's know? That's the point. There's so many different ways to create. It's, you're creating, you're molding, you're shaping. So he could possibly have his way of doing things. I have my way of doing things. I've been doing it for 24 years. There is no perfect way. But what we try to do is ensure that the person doesn't call you and say they found the dreadlock on the pillow. So yes, I slip knot it, as you see from the root, and it is done with the same tool that he has because we- we're trying to ensure that it is locked. Yes, my method may be different than it's his, but that doesn't make it wrong. It's kind of hard to decide what the right method is as opposed to opinion right. if there is no standard in the industry there and there is no you know, uh, well, regulation or whatever. That's, you well, know what I mean? You like, can use there... aesthetics and look at the final product um, and the end result. What actually looks the most like a dreadlock? What looks the most what's the least detectable to know that there's an extension placed there. I don't know if you want to actually look at her hair closely, but you can't see where her natural hair ends and the extension begins. Hair, her hair? Yes. Which is, yeah, I would. Come on. Which come is on okay up. for him to have a different technique, but yeah. I have hundreds of pictures showing the final product. So if a person decides they don't want my method, they have the option. Man, it looks really good. It does. Yeah. Go ahead and go Ma'am, back. Thank you. Now, if you look at um, the pictures. But that, you know, but see, that the fact that it looks really good doesn't mean she is entitled to $9,000 from the defendant. So let's talk about your lawsuit. Um, you want the money you paid her for her 14 hours, 12 hours to go back to you. You want the amount that you paid not only for the hair that she used, but also the hair that you used there. That way you don't pay for hair at all. Right? That's what you're saying. You shouldn't have to pay for hair at all, which would be a freebie hair. Um, 900, you're suing for that. You're suing for 2200. Is that what you charge to do it? Okay, and so my that's. Process was a three day I process. understand that. And then you char you're charging $700. You're asking for $700 for removal of glue to explain that to me. Okay, so now as I'm taking down the hair, there's. There's a lot of glue. There's not a dab of glue. There is a bunch of glue all down the locks that Miss Sabrina did in my hair. So as I'm taking them out, it's too much hair. I have... No, but how do you come up with $700? Well, because I had to call someone else who who ended up helping me take the locks out okay, of my hair and they charged me. but did you pay that person $700? Yes. Do you have any proof of that? Yes. Okay, so you did a, a Zelle transfer... Uh, cash app transfer on 12.9 to someone um, at a particular braids and weave salon for $700. Wow, man. That's an expensive thing. It really is so I, You know, I try to understand this whole thing. I watch that Chris Rock special. <laughs> I try, and I know, I know it's like a really, um, wow. 
Okay, and then now the hall rental and pain and suffering is $4,200 of your lawsuit against this lady. What yes. are you talking about? Welcome back to People's Court, Harvey Levin here. Okay, so who knows something about dreadlocks around oh here? Oh my goodness, who knew it was me? Mm. <laughs> okay, so how are you, sir? I am good, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, it thanks is, for asking. But now I have a question for you. God I'm gonna ask something. If you went to a hairdresser and they put they put dreadlocks in and they botched the job, could you take them out yourself or do you have to go back to the hairdresser? Huh. Could I take them out or could I go back to the hairdresser? Not a trick question. It's not a trick question, but I always like to take my time answering a question. Okay, well, <laughs> we don't have time, so what do you say? What do I say? I say, God darn it, let me go ahead and do it myself and take them out because I want everything to be natural. Fair enough. You know? Okay. Hey. Thank you. Ain't nothing wrong with artificial. Nice. But I like being natural. This could go on forever. We're going inside the courtroom. So I had rented a hall for my birthday party, which was canceled because my hair was not done. Why didn't you just put on a wig and have a birthday party? Well, here's the thing. I'm allergic to glue. So had she informed me that she was using glue, I could have told her that. I cannot wear wigs with glue. Then because I, why didn't I, my you wear a wig without out. glue and have a birthday party? No. <laughs> okay, well that's on you. If yeah. you can't have a birthday party and celebrate life's milestones over hair, that's on you. In court, what is recompensable are the damages that naturally flow from whatever wrong you're able to establish, okay? But if you cancel a trip to Tahiti or you cancel your birthday party, that is your choice. Your choices don't always cost somebody else something. And 2000 for pain and suffering, uh, I think the same analysis goes for that. Folks, here's where the problem lies. You're acting like this is a science and that by bringing him in to critique her job, that somehow I can conclude his way is the only way and her way cannot can I right. say something, Your Honor? And they're really, this is art and not science. And, you know, although you've done everything that you can by bringing him in, you've done a lot more than most litigants do. But unless, you know, you guys are going to show me some authoritative scientific book on how this is done and that somehow she did something wrong, I don't see how it is that you can win this lawsuit. Um, based on what has been presented to me, I am not going to order the defendant to recompense you $9,180. It's like I say, it's an art and not a science. I don't know why you would start ripping this stuff out of your own head. I don't know why you would cancel your birthday party. Um, you know, but you know, you are free and American and can do whatever you want. It's just that it doesn't necessarily mean someone else has to pay you $9,000 when you do it. Verdict for the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. So the plaintiff loses, gets nothing. Ms. Howard, what are you thinking? She lied and I should have known better when I seen her hair. I should have left, but of course I didn't. And it sucks, but whatever. I mean, this must be a big shock to you not mm -hmm. to get anything after suing for $9,000. What was it like sitting in the chair for 14 hours getting your Tiresome. Hair Tiresome? Yes. I don't know how you stood it. What's the condition of your hair now? How would you describe it? Um, it's damaged, badly damaged because of the glue. So what happens? Uh, well, I mean, you just got to let it repair. grow out? Yeah, I'm, I have him to help repair it. Okay, well, good luck to you. Okay. Sorry. Ms. Reese? I got to feel you were somewhat worried, weren't you? I mean, $9,000? I wasn't worried huge, because, huge. thank you. I wasn't worried because I knew, you know, my, my intuition from the beginning, this was some form of scam. You know, she wanted the tinier ones to begin with. She cheated herself and got the larger ones, and she simply wanted something smaller, which is what she had done him do. So. Yeah. All right. Good enough. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Whoa, -ho. 9,000. Harvey? So here's the thing, Doug. Um, this case requires an expert, but just because you bring an expert witness in doesn't mean that you automatically win. Sometimes experts have an ax to grind, and sometimes they're just not that good. So it's important to bring them in. You lose if you don't have one, but you don't automatically win if you do.
This is the plaintiff, Cherise Peoples. She says she went to the defendant a week before her birthday for a special hairdo. And boy, the woman made a mess of her. And she had to wear a scarf around for weeks because she was so embarrassed. The woman claims she's been doing hair 25 years? No way. Because she did a horrible job, which looked hideous. She's suing for $500, the cost of the hairdo, and pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Nokia Showers. She says the plaintiff is a very picky and decisive individual, and there was simply no making her happy. She spent four hours on her hair. She kept insisting she make it look like she wanted it to look, and kept telling her it was impossible what she wanted to achieve with her type of hair. And so, here they are. She's accused of not knowing what she's doing. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Peoples, you had decided that you wanted a certain hairstyle for your birthday, was it? Yes, Your Which right. birthday was it? The one that just passed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good one. That kind of wasn't what I was asking, but good answer, because I have no business asking. All right, so in any event, you go to her. How did you know her? Had you had your hair done by her before? Yes, right. I've initially uh, had my hair cut by her. Um, I used to have locks, and she cut my hair. Then I sent my mother to her. Okay, so you've done business with her before and you've been happy. So on this particular occasion, did you send her some pictures of what it is you wanted done and then she gave you a quote? Yes. Okay, and what were the pictures that you sent her? Yes, I have them in my phone. Okay, I've seen them. They're three different st um, styles. Yes. All right, so what? which one did you want? Why'd you send her three different styles? Because I was in detail of what I wanted. I, the first initial picture that I sent, I said, I wanted that one, it's like a longer extended bob. And I sent her two extra pictures to show her how I wanted it layered. The sides were supposed to be tapered down and the back was supposed to be tapered down. Okay, um, so she says, great, it'll be 360, including the hair, uh, the hair bundles, I guess. All right, so you go there and does she ever tell you, you know, you can't have all of these hairstyles or? I, I told her I don't want all of the hairstyles that I want the first initial hairstyle, the extended bob cut in layers, but this is how I want the sides and the back. Well, it kind of is then that you want, the, but so you wanted, you wanted a certain way you're describing with the first picture, how you want one part with the next picture, how you want the sides or whatever, like that. To let all right, her so know. what does she tell you before you start the procedure, does she complain to you, I don't think I, that we can do this with artificial hair? No, because I sent her the pictures five. Okay, I'm gonna read from your complaint. When she asked me which one I wanted, I told her all of them. One photo showed how I wanted the front, one how I wanted the sides, and one how I wanted the back. You changed that and you wrote, I wanted the first picture, that's fine. But according to you, it's, she, she says the defendant told me she'd been doing hair for 25 years. No one had ever asked her to do a hairstyle like that and she couldn't do it because the people in the pictures had natural hair and I was getting a weave. That's where I got that from, yes. your statement, yes. that you didn't change. So tell me about that. Yes. Didn't she tell you before you sat down that this was hard? No. Well then why did you say she did? She, she stated that once we were in the middle of the style, we got into an argument in the middle of the process of her doing my hair. When I first initially sent her the pictures. She, that's not how this reads. I told her what I wanted. She told me she'd been doing hair 25 years. No one had ever asked her to do that and she couldn't do it. But it shouldn't matter if my hair was real or not. I had gone to other places where they're able to style weaves with no issues. I told her, do the hairstyle I was there for. So she did my hair. That certainly sounds like it's at the beginning. Is it your testimony that you tell her that at the beginning? I give her a consultation. I told her on the phone prior to her even coming to the house, that that style was unachievable because she wanted four styles mixed into one. I sat her down in the salon when she came that day, gave her a full consultation, consultation and told her, I'm gonna do exactly the way you want it, but I wanna get paid regardless to if you like it or not, because I'm explaining to you, Why don't you just not do it if you can't do it though? 
Well, you know, I was trying to appease her because, again, she's been my customer for a while, and I she I know she's picky and undecisive, and so I just wanted to appease her and try to accommodate her. And so I explained to her that the style this is going to be hard, or this is unachievable. Unachievable. The style is unachievable. Is I'm going to try to do it exactly the way you want it. I'm gonna cut the size. Why short. was it unachievable? Because when you sew in a a weave, it falls in one direction, and you're not able to flip it over. She wanted to flip it over to the side. She wanted to pull it up in a ponytail, and the braiding, the way you braid the weave. The way you braid the hair and then you sew it in, it's gonna fall either straight down, mostly just straight down, either straight down towards the back. However, you sew it in, that's the way it's gonna lay because the the hair is sewed on a on a track on a weft, and the only way you the way you sew it in is the only way it's gonna fall. Okay, so what so what difference does it make if that's the way it's gonna fall if you cut it the way she wants to cut it? Like she has the hair here for the fade, right? Well, no, she, I put small, short tracks in the back and then longer tracks over the top. Do you have a picture of the finished product? No, I didn't take Do a picture. Do you have a picture of the finished product? Yes. I know you have a picture of you pulling things, and but do you have a picture of actually how you looked when you yes. left there? The Let me see that. The picture immediately, as soon as I left your honor, her Okay, house, here I, are the, the, the pictures you yeah. sent her, right? Right. Yes. And according to you, this is unachievable. These are white ladies. Yes. With their right. own with their own natural hair. <laughs> with their own natural hair that can be manipulated that way. Yeah. We cannot. That's not necessarily true, Your Honor. I have pictures where I had my hair done before and prior shortcuts with the taper look. And it but was a natural oh, Sandra, person. don't talk over her. Hold on. It was a natural per I have other pictures too. The Okay, this is you in, uh, with a bandana or whatever. A, a scarf, uh, yes. Right, so I can't really see how the hair looks. Exactly. Right. That's I'm asking you if you have pictures of how the hair looked. So is this, when was this picture taken? When I got to my house after I tried to manipulate it after I went to okay. work. Okay, so, so what is, are these scales of justice on your back of your neck? Yeah, I'm a Libra. Oh, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> 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 so you're unhappy because tell me what are the things you're unhappy about you feel like the back doesn't look like nothing right exactly and if you look in the the right but you understand a weave it, i mean no matter what how is she going to shave that to be the fade you're looking for here it's impossible no no it's, it's not your honor the the pictures that i just gave you this was a weave it was a sew-in and it's tapered shaved in the back that's the weave hair because she had I'm me not, get I don't want you to tell me about how the back looks I want you to show me a picture of the back well uh there's another picture yes is that the back it's the the side yes and I don't so you're telling me you want I you can't. want me you're telling me trust me judge it looked really tapered in a picture I'm not showing you I mean the side no. right because it looks I mean, I understand the physics of what she's saying. If you put a weave here, it's gonna it's gonna go down. How is it supposed to look shaved? How do you how do you install a weave that looks shaved? There, there is. Okay, well, show me one picture where there's a weave that's shaved. That's what I tried. To well, but you didn't. The I picture know, you're showing not. me. When was this picture taken? Uh, a while ago. Long ago. And yeah. this is you, right? Yes, that's me. Okay, and it's a cute short do. It's adorable. Um, and it's weave. At, well, you that's see, great, honor, but, you, but oh, your okay. complaint is the, that the, the fade here doesn't look right. Show me a picture. Where you're claiming that in this one I will, I will see that it can be achieved. I don't think it can be achieved, and your picture doesn't prove it can be achieved. Do you have a picture on the internet where it could be achieved? No, Just I show don't me have anything so, where it could be achieved. Well, I have Because it sounds phone. like what she's saying is correct. I have Your my honor? cell phone. Hold on, ma'am. Go ahead. I have my cell phone. Okay. Uh, I have pictures. Okay. So you, she does your hair. It takes five hours. You pay her yes. while you're standing there looking at your hair. You pay her yes, the remaining fee, and you give her a $20 tip. When did you decide you were unhappy? As soon as I, uh, I was unhappy while I was paying her. And then you gave her the $20 tip? Yes, because that's how I try to benefit. You know, I try to help out people. I, that's not, okay. No, a tip means you're happy with the service. I tip, I tip at Dunkin' Donuts through a drive through Your Honor. I and tip that's everywhere. Fine. Okay, that's lovely. I, and but if the Dunkin' Donuts person threw my donut at me <laughs> or gave me a hairy donut, I would not be tipping them. I would express my displeasure by no tip. But in, in any event, you, I when do you first reach out to her and tell her you're unhappy? 
Uh, the day after my birthday. When was okay. my birthday was ten ten. And I what, got my oh, hair done. Oh, that's my daughter's birthday. Ooh. And um, and and you got your hair done what day? On the 9th. On the 9th. So two days later, on the 11th, you reach out to her. Is that accurate? She called you on the 11th, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And what does she tell you when she calls you? She tells me that she didn't like her style. I didn't like it either. <laughs> because I explained to her that it was not going to look that way. I did not like it either. Right. I told her that I would do her another style over free of charge because it took me five oh, that's hours really nice. to do her hair. Why did, did you just do that? She wanted the same exact style. She was being obstinate. She did not want to be reasonable. I would have done her another style that would have looked nice on her, but she did not want to do that. So she was not going to allow me to redo her style. I couldn't give her back no money. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So if the beautician says, I cannot do what you want, really. You don't have the hair for it, but you insist, and I do it anyway, or the, customer, the hairdresser does it anyway, and it messes up your hair. Do you have a case against the hairdresser? Do I have a case against the hairdresser? Do you have a case against a hairdresser if they mess up your hair after you insisted they do something? I wouldn't think so. Would you? I'm asking the questions. <laughs> okay, what do you say? I don't think they'd have a case. Because? because the hairdresser told them that they couldn't do the hairstyle. But, okay, why is the hairdresser doing something that the hairdresser knows can't be done? I would say it's a creative process. So she's <laughs> asking him to do something creative, and she's saying, you know, he's, he's, she was telling her in the first place that it can't be done, and she was saying do it anyway, oh so I think she has no recourse. You should be a TV producer. <laughs> oh, going inside the courtroom. You picked a style that's impossible to achieve. You it's got, not, you got to, you, you, you testified that she tells you that, that this is gonna be really hard. Right. But in any event, uh, if she offers to you, I will do your hair over again for free, why don't you just take her up on that and do something else? Because she didn't do a good job Well, with let me the ask you this. Hairstyle. Did you go somewhere else where they did do a good job? Yes. Show me the pictures of how you looked in that somewhere else. Oh, so you didn't do the same hair, the same do, no, right? No, I, I kept the hair to show that she didn't do it the proper way. Listen to my question. If you claim it's achievable, I, and that's all you wanted from her, you wanted it to be achievable, then show me how someone else achieved it because I'm understanding what she says. And I try so hard no. to understand black hair. I this, do, Honor, because it's is, complicated. This is the type of look she Weaves was are, about. I get it. I, oh, come this closer to me. Come closer. Come, is, are these, is this a weave? This is a, uh, a quick weave. Yeah. I watch and Chris Rock's hair. documentary. <laughs> I try so hard because I get so many cases like this. And I, okay, turn around. This is a type of look. She brought the short wait, hair to wait, get the wait, type wait, of look wait. around the side. Wait, wait, is this your hair? No, this is weave hair. That's all weave hair. That's weave hair. This would have been the type of look that she was getting, but she did buy the short short hair to get this look, but it would not look like that in the style that she wanted. Why so, not? So Why it was, can't it look it like... was tapered back here and the, the top was feathered. Right. And that's the style that she wanted. From one of the pictures. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Why couldn't style. it, why couldn't it you? It couldn't be shaved like that. It could only no, no, shaved like, like that it can't, but are you saying that that is how you did it? That's exactly how I did it because it was white hair and then it was um, feathered on the top to, to fall over it. Okay. So it laid tapered. She just didn't like it. I didn't like the size either. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I am not gonna order her to return the 380. I am not gonna order her to pay you pain and suffering. Um, yeah. I think that you were well on notice no. that it wasn't gonna look exactly like those white ladies no. natural hair. Um, Your Honor, can I? No, we're done. And um, this hair, and that's that. The, no, if the, she says she's been doing 25, she says she's been doing hair for 25 years. And she's done Why? yours several times. She's done my hair twice. And Everyone knows, beauticianists know, you do not use black thread on blonde hair. You use blonde thread. Your problem isn't the black thread on blonde hair. Your problem no, is you don't like the cut. Uh, we're done. We're done. I, I, I think that she made a magician, No, no. What part of we're done was confusing? And apparently you can't just win. You still have to have the last word. No, yeah. You're going to win. Okay? I don't think you did anything wrong because you put her on notice. If you had said, yes, I can do it, and then you couldn't do it, you can't complain later and say, ah, oh, but. It, when you tell somebody this is gonna be really hard, it's not gonna look like that, I'll do my best, and they say go for it, then they eat the results. So long as the professional tells the non-professional, I'm gonna do my best, you want me to do my best because it may not work, then you are in the clear. I find in your favor. I have a witness. So the judge finds for the defendant, Ms. Peoples, it didn't work out for you. You kept wanting to say something to the judge. What did you yes. want to say to her? I had a witness, the witness who took out the hair to show, to see what horrible job that she did. But the judge didn't 
allow well, me to call the, the judge was convinced by the by the professional that but what you wanted just not couldn't a be done. Professional. Okay. Sorry about that. That's why the judge has decided you're going to have to live with it. Okay. All right. Oh, here we are, Miss Showers, <laughs> waiting for you. Hi. All right. You are a professional, right? Yes, I am. Over 25 years of doing here. I would say so. So. Obviously, you're happy with the judge. She backed up what you said. Yeah, she was absolutely right. I tried to satisfy the client, and she was not satisfied and was very picky. So, you know, we tried to work with her, but she wasn't happy with it. You've worked with her before. I doubt you'll work with her again. Am I right? Yeah, sorry. But, yes, we won't be seeing each other again. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, have yeah, a great Good day. luck. Okay, Doug, I mean, look, as long as the business person makes it clear uh, what the perils are and the customer says, I want it done anyway, tough luck for the customer. This is the plaintiff, Diane Hernandez. She says she hired the defendant to put in hair extensions, and the woman ruined her head and scalp in the process. The unruly, unprofessional woman is claiming she did nothing wrong, and is also accusing her of pulling her own hair out. Now she suffers from terrible migraine headaches. Something has to be done to stop this woman from doing the same thing to someone else. And that's why she's here suing her for the $2,175 she's owed. This is the defendant, Nikki Banks. She says she told the plaintiff not to wash her hair after their appointment. She did, and the tape got wet, and she had a problem. She told her she'd be there the very next day to fix it, but the plaintiff smeared her name all over social media. She once had a five-star rating on Facebook. Now, because of the crazy, impatient plaintiff, she has a 3.8 rating. Oh, her money? No way. She's accused of causing a hair-raising experience. The defendant is filed a countersuit for $500 for defamation of character. All parties, please use your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, in. Diana Hernandez, you are suing Nakia Banks doing business as Lux Hair Studios? Okay, for $2,175 that you say you are owed, 2000 of it in pain and suffering, and 175 that you paid her for the hair. What happened? Correct. Um, oh, by the way, and you are counterclaiming her for $500 for defaming you on Facebook. Okay, let me hear from you first on your claim. On October 2nd, I hired Miss Banks to do hair extensions from a place called Thumbtack. A website, Do you mean a website? Okay. A website business. So you put, you type in hairstylist in the search Correct. thing, and then it tells you who's in your area. Yes. They um I guess send a message to the hairstylist or whatever you're and looking then she, for. And then you two communicate directly. Yes. Correct. So do you pay uh, a certain amount to have your name on there? Yes. Um, well, it's not for, uh, to have the name on there. You pay a certain amount for each um, prospective um, oh. client that you get. How do you get your name on there? I submitted my cosmetology license. So I have, and you have to put And then how do all those comments get up there? Once you do a service with, uh, with a customer from Thumbtack, they and, uh, will go ahead and send that person a, a um, survey. A survey to say okay. how you did. Interesting. What a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Um, well, she came to my home, and um, she stood there about an hour, and she put these tape-in extensions. Had you ever done tape-in extensions? No, I have not. What kind of extensions had you done before? Um, fusion extensions and then a sew-in extensions. So you but, wanted to try tape? Yeah, I wanted to try tape. Okay. So um, I found Did Ms., you tell Ms. her all Banks. this before or no? Yes, I did. Okay. I have it all here. Okay, so go ahead. And then um, she came, she stood there, like I said, an hour. And then she was late because she said that uh, her tire had got flat. So maybe that, she was just probably having a bad day that day and took it out of my head. On your head? Yes. Okay, so and how did she take it out on your head? What was the problem? Well, she's behind me. I can't see what she's doing behind me. So I had my head down. She was putting tape in, putting the tape across my head and then adding the weft to the tape. The what? Weft. What's weft? I actually have a sample of the hair weft. It's the hair that's on the track. So you can purchase the hair without hair being on the track, or they sew the hair to a track so that it's able to... A service. track is what, like a long piece? So these are, are what, what the track is here. That's as wide as the track comes? They're different lengths. You can okay. measure them and have them cut to customize the person's head. So when you're taping it, is there actual tape that goes on my head? It's actually hair tape. 
and it's double sided. Do you have a, a sample of the hair tape? Of the hair tape, yes. I'm coming down. So this is the double sided hair tape. Is that a sample of what you used on her hair? This is the actual one that was used in her hair. I kept it. Okay, now how long, okay. So a very thin. You would measure it the size of the hair. Right. And then you would put it, put the hair, uh, the weft onto the tape. So but what are you taping it to, her hair? It's, yeah, it's going to the hair. So when it comes out, how does it come out? You have a hair dissolvent, a glue a dissolvent. Solvent. A solvent, okay, yeah. to dissolve it. So yeah, there's a solvent that you have to use. Otherwise, you know, there's tape. It's it's glue, it's gonna be there, so you have to use a solvent. But how do I get the solvent between the adhesive tape and my hair? How do I get it in there so that it doesn't rip my hair out? It's, it normally comes in a nozzle. Oh, well, here, it, it, this is the, the whole thing. Yeah, you know what I don't see? Men using hair extensions. Or, honest to God, I don't know what's wrong with us. Um, okay, so can you wash your hair when there's tape in it? I advise, I do tell my clients that I do advise to not have the base of the hair wet within the first 24 hours because you would want to give the glue time to... And to then it. after that, what can you do? And then after that, you can wash it. Um, I wouldn't suggest vigorous hair washing, but yeah, you can wash so it. So how do you... How do you and you exercise can personal also, hygiene when you have to... How long does this stuff last? Um, it lasts a few weeks. You can usually keep it in for maybe two to three weeks. And, and then if, what starts happening after two to three weeks? After two to three weeks, they will start to slip out, yes. Okay, so is this a very popular procedure, tape? Because it sounds Neanderthal. Did she ask you for tape or was that your suggestion? She asked me about the tape and asked me um, uh, compare it to the microlinks or to the fusion. Did I think How that How do people do with tape? How well? Not very many people that I have like the tape. Um, only because of the time frame. You're only able to keep it in, you know, a few weeks and they would like something a little more permanent. All right, so you paid $175. Or so when did you start to see a problem? Um, first of all, Your Honor, she told me I could wash my hair the same day. She did not say I couldn't wash it. Did you wash your hair that day? No. It fell right. out within the hour. Just fell out? Yes, no and I told her that. She just, I, how she just soon wait days did you or call weeks. her? How soon did you call her? With it, right after she left, within probably 40 minutes. Okay, and then did she call you right away? About two hours later, she called me and she said that um, she had one of them that came out. What day of the week were you doing her hair at her house? Um, I, I'm not sure of the day of the week, but it was the 2nd of October, I believe. 2nd of October? Was she texting you or calling you? I, I can't remember. I want to say that she called okay, me. Okay, so find the text series on October 2nd. That's what I want to look at. I have all the texts on October 2nd. Yeah, okay, I hand it to my bailiff. Thank you. Go ahead. And so um, I tell her, okay, no problem. I can go ahead and fix it. I asked her, what was she doing the following morning? She said, yes, you know, okay. We set it up for 9 a.m. for me to come the following day. And um, 20 minutes later, she texts me and says, they all fell out. So I said, they I all said fell the out. Whole track Hold on, can out. you stop interrupting her? I'm driving, I don't want to get a ticket right about now. You know, I don't want to get a ticket for talking on my phone. You know, can I give you a call around four o'clock and we can talk? She tells me that she's on her way to the doctor. She's not going to be able to talk. And I told her, just give me a call when she can. Next thing I know, between um, Thumbtack, the site that we're on, Yelp, as well as my Facebook page, she starts going on there. She wrote a review, says she wants all her money back. And I said, well, wait a minute. When did it get to this point? I just talked to you a while ago, and we've set up a time for me to come tomorrow morning. And now you're at the point that you've made this review and you want all your money back. So you feel like she pulled her extensions out because she just said, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. She I mean, said person she, who's well, worried she about said, thinning hair doesn't do that. That's what she said. She said she, she said biggest mistake that she did was she, she took them out herself. Did you pull these out? Because I'm kind of finding it hard to believe that all of them fell out. I think that maybe you were it testing them. It was a them. whole track. Mm -hmm. And as I put water, which she said I could, I didn't put soap, shampoo, conditioner, nothing like that. Just added water because it was so hard. So I was brushing it, and then the whole track came out. What she showed you is actually a, a tape in how it's supposed to look. What she put in my head didn't, didn't even look like that. What did I it have look the pictures. like? Okay, let me see the pictures. This is a th And I'm she didn't sorry. put one track, right? Uh, she put uh, three long pieces of tape, stuck the... I guess three pieces of track on my hair. Okay. Okay, and the hair that, I have the hair in my purse right here. The hair that she has here, they don't sell it on her website because I want to know why was it hard when I, you know, and, and why okay, But what it? is it you're saying? I don't understand what you're saying. Where's the lie? What did she do? Okay, she lied when she said the hair 
was Brazilian hair. How do you know that? Prove that to me. Because she brought the hair in in this package. Right. Okay. So I contact her hair people to say, you know. Who are her hair people? The name that's on the package? Maven.com. What's Maven.com? Maven.com is the company that um, plenty of hairstylists use, and they are distributors for that hair company. But did you buy it from them yourself? Yes. And I, then you're trying to tell me that what? That you called Maven and they said she didn't buy it from them? Yeah. Do you, and you have a note from yes. Maven? That they don't sell what? Brazilian hair? That or they th don't sell this all tray hair, nor did Let she. Let me see that too. Wet it, and you can see, Judge, that it, it's, it'll, it's hard like a horse hair. How do you spell Maven? M A Y V E N N. What she's saying is that this is another brand. And what Maven is saying is we don't sell this brand. Um, I, I have a lot of hair in my home. So what I do is once I get the hair, instead of just having it just in the open, I put it in a bag so that so, I have something so you, to keep you, it in. You, what, well, what was in the bag before that? It was a different brand company, Ultra probably. It's a different probably brand company. So I, That's kind of funky what you're saying. Okay, why are you suing for $2,000? You, you had a plan that she was going to come and fix everything tomorrow. You say, you know what? I don't like this. Because you know, and that's all fine. The, but why aren't you just suing for what you paid her? Why did you have to because up it to 20 the, times like the I amount? Like I said, the weft coming out, mm -hmm. it left the tape in my head. And when they had to remove the tape, Who's they? My, I paid a hairstylist to remove it. Do you have it. proof of that? No, I don't. Do you don't, have a statement from I that have, person? No, I do not, okay, but I have on. pictures from it. Okay, show me the pictures. I'm not going to yank out happened? my own hair, Your Honor. That That's very painful, what I went through. All right, so you have a counterclaim against her for $500 because she went on your Facebook page, right? Is it? Okay, How's that, that work? That's it a lie. was um, a, a couple of the social media platforms. One of them was Yelp. She had a friend. So she put ne her negative reviews on you. Well, Why is that actionable by you for $500? Well, because at first it wasn't just her negative reviews. That would have been fine if she felt the way whatever it was that she felt and wanted to make a review about it. She had her boyfriend or someone and two other people How go into How do you know? Okay. So it just so happens the same day that she decides to get, the, um, get her hair extensions done, three people that are all... Um, Wait, one person was a boyfriend. He said exactly who he was. One person was a boyfriend. Uh, a boyfriend. Another person You don't is, have a boyfriend? Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin in front of the TMZ a Hollywood tour bus in Los Angeles. So the question, um, can you sue somebody for defamation if they talk crap about you on social media? And everybody talks crap on social media. Uh, if it's true, I don't think so. Okay, but let's say it's not true. Let's, I mean, is social media the same as when a newspaper say prints? I don't think so. I think it's just anybody can say whatever they want, so. Is that right? No, I mean, it's documented. They're, if they're going to spread rumors about you, whether it's true or not, I believe that, I mean, you can get a defamation law. Well, true, you're, you got a problem. False, that's another story, going inside the courtroom. Hey, show me what you're looking at. It's on my cell phone. I can okay, get, get it. You would like for me to take your time. Just show me the comments you're talking about. Sure. Is there anything they said that was anything other than opinion? If they lie about something, that's defamation. But when she says she's rude, that's opinion. When she says it was terrible, that's opinion. Okay. A Juan says on October 4th, my girlfriend had her hair done by Nikki. Never again will I pay for such a service. Her service was October 2nd. So why are you assuming that that's her boyfriend? Well, here's the thing. Um, yeah, it may not have been that he may have did the review with the and year then two later. The other, the, also, by the way, Jordan is also October 4th. So maybe Jordan also wasn't happy. Which doesn't make a difference to me in my ruling here today. You know, when you put yourself out there and you're doing a, there's going to be people who are happy. There's going to be people who are unhappy. I when I see, I have to be honest with you. When I see a vendor with five, nothing but fives, I assume all their family members wrote the reviews. That's all I'm going to say. I understand. But um, in any event, uh, let's talk about what's going on here. First of all, let's talk about what this is definitely not. It's not defamation of character for the reasons I've explained. Everything that she wrote, that you can prove she wrote, because these others aren't even on the same day, so, um, is totally her opinion of how her experience was. She has an absolute First Amendment right to express it. That is not to be confused with lying in order to affect somebody's business. So you need to get a thicker skin. Second of all, Let's talk about your claim against her for $2,175. Say again why it is that you're entitled to not just your money back, but $2,000 more. The migraines from having that tape pulled out. Do you have any medical evidence out. of migraines? Um, I don't have no medical evidence of migraines. Okay. 
All right. I'm going to rule in favor of the plaintiff in this case in the amount of the $175, plus, of course, your court costs in filing the case. That is my verdict. Thank you. Well, nothing on your countersuit, and the plaintiff does collect some against you for the work you did. Are you still proud of that work? I am proud, very proud of my work. Um, I am confident in what I do, and I stand by everything what that I do. What went wrong? Um, I in don't. This case. I don't know. I just just dissatisfied customer. I mean, it does happen, right? It does. You can't it have does. fives right across the board. I would feel a little weary about going to a company that did have fives across the board. So it's okay. I'm I'm good with it. And again, I stand by my work. So I wouldn't have done anything All differently. Right. Okay. All right. That's the way. All right. Step on in here. Satisfied how this comes out? Um. Yeah. I wish the judge would have gave me my pain and suffering, but. You want the 2000 for the bad hair day? Yep. How harrowing is it for a, a woman to go through this with, with hair, with hair falling out, it doesn't work out? Terrible. You look in the mirror, and what do you see? It's just terrible. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, but are you okay now? No. Harvey? Yeah. Okay, Kurt, so if you, just so you know, if you state something as opinion, you are way more protected in terms of being sued for defamation than if you state something as fact.